Okay, here we are. It's Friday, May the 22nd. The noon uh, horn just went for lunchtime. Uh, people are coming back to work, but some people aren't. And we're going to talk for a moment about insolvencies. There's been a lot of talk about how much this COVID-19 is going to impact the economy. And now we're starting to see the news roll out on insolvencies. Now, just to be for, before we start talking about what insolvencies have happened, let's talk about what an insolvency is. Effectively, an insolvency is when an individual or corporation cannot meet their financial obligations with the people they owe money to. So you might have accounts payables, you might owe money to the bank. And so uh, if you're going insolvent, it means that you are no longer able to kind of run your operations under the current circumstances. And that's unfortunately the case for a lot of companies and individuals during this COVID-19 crisis. Um, so we're going to dive into some of the big names that have hit the headline news. Um, there is a process in place for companies and individuals to uh, file for protection, so to speak. So in the United States, they call that uh, Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. In Canada, we call it the uh, Companies Creditor, Creditors Act or the CCAA. Uh, and this is the uh, declaration that you are going into an insolvency state and you want to be able to operate and try and maybe bring yourself out of that insolvency. And there's been a very few, but there's been some cases over the last couple of decades of uh, fairly well-known Canadian names who have come out of an insolvency uh, declaration. So let's just talk about some of the prominent ones. Now, one of the very first ones, and we're going to touch on both Canadian names, ones locally here to the Vancouver market, and some of the big American names. And the very first one that came to mind, of course, is Pier 1 Imports. They filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection on February the 17th, as they were not able to find a buyer for their company and ind indicated they would have to close permanently. Um, so this uh, really kicked off the COVID-19 insolvency uh, declarations. Locally here, right after that, on March the 18th, there's a, a yoga studio that many people know in the Kitsilano area called Sempreviva. And they announced just as simply that they were closing down. They weren't even going in for bankruptcy protection. They were just shutting down their locations, sadly. One of the ones that came uh, to us through our connections in the financial services business was Encore FX. So Encore, or Encore FX was the second uh, com uh, company that was uh, developed by the uh, Guftison family over in Victoria. And that was actually a, a spinoff of a, a bankruptcy of some of their customers in Australia that kind of sparked this a domino effect that announced their announcement on March the 30th going into bankruptcy protection. We also have another Canadian name, one that's uh, called Fedora. It's a uh, food delivery company. They filed on April the 27th, uh, stating that they would have to stop operations. Now this company has uh, been projected that they had never actually turned a profit, so not a massive surprise there. Of course, in the fitness industry, there's been uh, businesses that have gone in kind of two directions. So you've got uh, Peloton, which is share price has just skyrocketed as they've had a number of new subscribers and trying to get their bikes pumped out of their factories as quickly as possible to keep up with the demand. So they're, they've been doing really well during COVID-19. But of course, we've had names like Gold's Gym, the famous uh, uh, fitness or uh, you know hard pump uh, workout gym that Gold's Gym was, uh, of course, the a uh, place where Arnold Schwarzenegger did all his uh, pumping iron during the time, times that he was in uh, Mr. Olympia. And, and, and so they filed for bankruptcy protection on May the 4th. Uh, we also know locally here that uh, Steve Nash has shut down all their gyms. A lot of our employees like working out Steve Nash and word on the street is they're in real trouble too and they may be filing for bankruptcy or bankruptcy protection. Another big name in the retail space is J. Crew. They filed for bankruptcy protection on May the 4th with the hopes that they could convert some of their debt into equity. Another big retail name in the States was Neiman Marcus. That came three days later on May the 7th, filing for bankruptcy protection. Here in Canada, we have a company that's been a longtime institution in the shoe industry. Tough business, the shoe industry, tough margins. Aldo Group filed for bankruptcy protection on May the 7th as well and citing that they were going to be starting to close some of their stores. Another company that's quite interesting, a company that had $4.2 billion of debt and lost money for nine straight years, yet still managed to stay in business with their 200 stores, is JCPenney. They filed for bankruptcy protection on May 15th. Things are not looking good there for that company. Again, carrying on in the retail space, that's where the, the big news is happening in bankruptcy, uh, bankruptcies and insolvency declarations was Reitman's, also a very long-standing Canadian institution in the retail space. Uh, they came into uh, declaring uh, creditor protection on May the 19th. 
And then back here locally, culinary capers in the catering space. Uh, an institution here locally, if you'd ever been to a corporate event that was uh, catered, you've probably seen that brand. They've been around for 33 years and sadly, they announced uh, that they were going to go into uh, uh, insolvency. They're shutting their doors down. They're not even claiming bankruptcy protection. They're just shutting their doors down. Uh, and that was announced only a couple of days ago. Here's an interesting point. Only two months ago, they had acquired a catering company called The Butler Did It. So you can see how much businesses shifted even in the catering space from two months ago where they were in the acquisition stage to now filing for bankruptcy. I also noticed the company RYU, their head office, uh, which is down on Broadway, has now been put up for lease. So I can imagine that they're probably in, in difficult times right now. Um, and then we, one other big name, of course, was Virgin Australia. Virgin Australia filed uh, for bankruptcy protection back in April the 21st. Uh, after the company did not get a government bailout. So the common theme here, of course, is companies that are in the retail space, I think we're gonna see a lot of restaurateurs uh, actually just not reopening their stores, uh, their restaurants, or they may reopen for a short term. Here in BC, restaurants are starting to slowly open, but some under some fairly uh, difficult requirements. They have to have uh, uh, proper spacing between their tables. They can't have more than four to six people at a table. Uh, they can't expand beyond 50% of their normal capacity. So it'll be interesting to see what restaurants do manage to stay open and reopen and which ones just, uh, you know, the doors are cl closed for good. Basically, I think what we'll see as we go down the, the, uh, the, the, uh, down the path of these insolvencies, we're going to see a common theme that businesses that have high levels of debt um, are obviously going to be a burden. Businesses that depend on uh, large uh, events. You know, there are a lot of in, uh, places like here in BC where you can't have more than 50 people uh, gathering. So think about festivals and um, events that require large gatherings of people. Uh, those businesses are probably not going to come back, at least not anytime soon. Um, and what I think is also interesting is to point out is that uh, people before COVID-19 really saw shopping as being an essential part of their day-to-day -day life. And people haven't been able to shop and a lot of people don't have the money to shop now. So you can see that uh, Shopping is not an essential service. <laughs> On an interesting note about personal insolvencies, there's a, here's a statistic that we found quite fascinating. We're gonna really be following this over the next couple of months as more data comes out. Here in Canada, personal insolvencies are down in 2020. So here's some numbers for you. In, if you compare the March numbers to that of February of 2020, we saw insolvencies, personal insolvency declarations drop by 3.3%. And compared to March of 2019, they're down 9%. We're seeing this both on the consumer side and on the corporate side. So consumer insolvencies are down 8.5% year over year. Corporate insolvencies are down 30.7% year over year. Now the question would be, well, why is that? Does it make any sense? Like we've got uh, COVID-19 causing rising unemployment businesses that can't sell their goods and services, yet insolvencies are going down. I can only suppose that there's two reasons for that. One is a lot of banks are extending credit, or especially for individuals, or allowing them to have uh, interest-free, it doesn't mean that they don't owe, owe the debt, but just deferring their debt payments on their mortgages or their commercial loans. And of course, we have what I describe as the Justin Trudeau's bailout for all program. And until there's a tapering off of this program or an end to where we see individuals receiving their $2,000 a month or their added benefits of having uh, young children, or we start seeing corporations that aren't getting funding through uh, wage subsidies or the $40,000 loan. I mean, at some point, these have to end. And when they do, that's when I think we're gonna see the rubber hit the pavement. That's when the news is gonna start really hitting the headlines. For this, we're going to be launching an insolvency tracker on our website. Uh, we should have it up and running hopefully within the next week, so you can check back in and take a look at that. Uh, it'll be quite interesting as we see this evolve. And I will want to say on a positive note, as we've seen in previous times in history, these types of crises actually, uh, as I call it, uh, create some corporate Darwinism create an opportunity for other businesses to really thrive. And there'll be new businesses that are created out of this pandemic and new ways in which we conduct ourselves and we'll become a stronger and better society, especially in the corporate world because of that. So that's my kind of positive spin on this. We'll keep you up to date. Thanks for tuning in and we'll let you know as more insolvencies come to the table. Thanks, bye-bye.